This LEGO Pirate Diorama is huge. Let's check out all the awesome details, techniques, and other clever and creative things going on with this epic build. So this is the Cerulean Straits, and it was built by a fantastic group of builders by the name of Josh, Gavin, Junior, Hanno, and Rod. I'll have links to all their social media in the description below. So thankfully I had the chance to take a look at this huge diorama at Brickvention 2023 and it's just so impressive. I think it's incredible what you can achieve when a handful of builders combine their efforts into one massive diorama like this. I think some of the best parts of this mock include some of the incredible moving details. So for example, there's this ancient temple on one side of the diorama and on the inside we can see a pirate wrestling a pig. And judging by the stonework on top here, I assume this is some kind of pig shrine of some sort. So I guess the pig lives here and is a little bit upset that people are coming by. There's also some fun movement. We can see some sort of dance happening around this pig-related shrine or statue. I think movement and motorized features like this just never fail to bring a mock to life. It makes it feel so realistic and real. Now there's a few other nice motorized parts of this mock, but uh, let's save those for the end of the video. Looking at the diorama as a whole now, the landscape techniques all look just beautiful. I think traditional landscape on a smaller scale diorama always looks nice, but there's something so unique about seeing big open landscape like this. Somehow it just hits different. I guess seeing landscape go on and on makes it resemble the real world and it becomes so much easier to get immersed in this Lego world and get swept up in the storytelling and the unique atmosphere that it creates. Plus landscape of this size allows you to include many different ships and have them interacting with one another all in one diorama. And that's something you kind of struggle to do if you're building it on a smaller scale because everything just gets a little bit too crowded. But when there's room to breathe here, you get something really magical. The diorama also has a plethora of wonderful techniques. Let's take a look at some of them now. We can see on the inside of this fortress, there's some wonderful brickwork. Now this utilizes your typical snot bricks and you attach tan or white tiles onto them to create that brick surface. But I think the best part is the masonry brick patches that look like exposed bricks that have kind of just been chipped away over time. I think the combination of these two different brick textures here makes this look stunning. Close by, we also have this wonderful thatched roof. Now, this utilizes a similar technique to the roof design on the Palace Cinema Modular Building set. And honestly, I love that. If a LEGO set has a good technique or a good design, steal it and then just repurpose it on your own creations. There's no use reinventing the wheel. If a LEGO set has an already existing design, take advantage of it. And it looks perfect here. I also love the rock work underneath this lighthouse tower. It uses a lot of your typical slope elements to build up this rocky pillar. But when you get to the stairs here that lead up to the lighthouse, we see that the rocks have transitioned from using slopes to curved slopes. So these pieces have a subtly different texture to them. But the difference here makes these stairs look like they've been carved into the rock. So it's interesting how that slight difference in texture does quite a lot. Textures are super important with LEGO building. While we're talking about textures, on the ground in the marketplace here, there's another gorgeous texture. And this is taking advantage of a bunch of different pieces, you know, different tiles, studs, these ingot pieces, and other unique tiles as well. All that combined together creates such a beautiful look. And the fact that it also goes underneath this nice rocky underpass, that's just awesome. The blending of the different colors of the ocean is uh, quite a standout part of this mark. Using these lighter trans blue tiles for shallow water and then transitioning into the darker, deeper colors for deeper water, it makes it look so clean and so pretty. I really love this area on the side here where we can see a more dense amount of rock that's scattered across the sea. It's great seeing a sudden burst of landscape on this creation, especially because so much of it is just open water. Seeing a nice amount of it here is very welcome, that's for sure. And it's especially cool to have so many rocks scattered across the water here because it's a pretty unique vibe that I can honestly say I haven't seen too many people build with LEGO. Building this dense rock inside the water is good because it lets you play with that shallow water technique I was showing you before. And it also allows you to add in all these beautiful pops of green landscape. And these areas also double as beautiful places for little minifigure vignettes that allow for all sorts of storytelling opportunities. It's just a really cool area overall, and it's always nice seeing LEGO creations that have such wonderful landscape on them. This all looks so good. One of the better minifigure vignettes here is this really nice little build that has this red trail leading up to the X for the treasure. That's super fun, and it's also cool to see how many different birds and animals are scattered just on this island alone. It's uh, another fun thing you can play with here is the amount of 
of animals that you can include on such a huge space like this. Now, of course, there's so many other wonderful details all throughout this creation, and I'm only touching on a few. But one other fun thing is something that's actually separate from the diorama. It's this microscale build that is a smaller version of this creation. Uh, I love this. What a fun challenge to build a smaller version of something large that you've made. But also, if you're doing a collab of this scale with multiple different people, it could also be a smart idea to build a microscale version of what you're planning on making and use that as a, a bit of a draft or a way to kind of get your ideas across so that everybody knows what it is that they're making when we're putting it all together. Letting this be a, a bit of a guide for the final product, that's super cool. Nothing like using Lego to help you plan another Lego creation. I love that. And as promised, here's some of those other bits of movement that are on this diorama. We can see a Kraken destroying a ship in the corner over here, and there's a little bit of movement so it looks like it's just tearing up the ship. That in itself is cool, but something that's also fantastic is the use of this T-Rex body to form the head of the Kraken, and then using the tail pieces from that exact same T-Rex to form the tentacles. I love that. What a fantastic part use using those different pieces that work perfectly for a sort of octopus shaped body and tentacles. Another thing off to the side is this sign that allowed the Brickvention guests to see the creation's name and the people who built it. And that's got some fun movement on it as well. It's just a great way of making a pretty boring mock card a lot more interesting. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this phenomenal creation. Hopefully it's given you a bit of inspiration for your own future pirate themed Lego mocks. Thanks for watching, happy building, and bye for now.